truly going to be blessed tonight. I'm not going to really go into it other than to let you know because he's going to share a little bit more of his story in a, in, in a little while. Um, but Mike is, uh, he lives in Lakeland and uh, travels the world doing his show as well as being an international missionary to the Dominican Republic. And like I said, he'll go into that a little bit later. But uh, I am glad you're here. And so let's open with a word of prayer. And then I'm going to turn it over to Mike and let him have a wonderful night with y'all. And I pray you all are ready to, to laugh and hurt. Uh, Mike mentioned this morning that laughter is like running um, like a 10 mile run for every, how long of laughter? For the heart, right, for the heart, for the heart. Because obviously he doesn't run like that. Uh, so let, let, let's, let's pray and then we'll get started with Mike in a little bit. Oh, Father, it has, it has been truly good to be in your house this morning, and it is uh, good to be back this evening. And, Father, we are, even like Mike was talking about this morning, it, it is um, truly hearty for the heart to, to be merry and to, to be joyful. It, it is like a medicine to the soul. And so, Father, I pray that this evening we truly do laugh and we enjoy the fellowship time together and with Mike as he uses the gift you gave to him to touch our hearts. So, Father, bless this evening, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mike Williams. Are you messing with me already? Is that what it is? What? What did I do? What? I, I turned the monitors down a little bit. Yeah. Is that, was it loud up here for you? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Just bring, oh, okay. All right. Well, it, it, it's fine. The brother back here told me, he took me by the hand, really sincere. He said, thank you for your sermon. And he said, brother... I just, I was thinking as you were talking, I was thinking about that verse, there's a time for everything, time for laughter, thought, amen, a time for tears, and he said 12 o'clock was the time to knock it off, okay, so <laughs> anyway, and so brother, God bless you, thank you for, <laughs> see there's somebody keeping it real, you know what I'm saying, so, I am I am excited to be here tonight, it's a great group of folks, good to see a lot, a lot of old friends here tonight, it's just a blessing to be here with you guys. Um, th for those of you who are meeting me for the very first time, let me give you just a quick little background uh, on my life, I started off as a comedian, uh, oh, 26 years ago, I didn't originally be, a, I wasn't funny in school. Uh, I didn't uh, do a lot of jokes. I wasn't the, the uh, class clown or anything like that. Uh, I, I didn't start this until I was, you know, right at 29 years of age. And I started off as a writer for Carrot Top, okay? And then, then I, from there, I, I went on and I got picked up by the Florida Baptist Convention, got to tour with some major, major groups back then, like Third Day and Audio Adrenaline and First Impression. And so it's just the, 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 three, the three biggies. Yeah, three biggies, and uh, and that's how I met a certain gentleman who happens to be in your church, and that's how I met Chip right over there. I met Chip, and uh, uh, <laughs> oh man, it's good to be here with you tonight. Uh, I, my wife always wants me to tell people this, and this is true. I have a heart condition. Okay, you know, you know that. I, I have a heart condition. So if tonight, for any reason, I fall down, don't just sit there and go, oh, this is going to be funny. Watch, okay? <laughs> don't, don't. I will not joke with you that way, okay? So is there, any, is there like a doctor or nurse person in here? Anybody? Who knows CPR? Anybody knows CPR? Okay, good. Just come start the compressions, okay, up here. And, and I tell you that. Uh, because I actually flatlined twice. Yeah, yeah. I, I was in Butte, Montana, and I flatlined twice. And the worst part about it was I had read that book the week before called 90 Minutes in Heaven. I don't, have you seen the book? And his experience was completely different than mine, okay? <laughs> He saw a bright light at the end of a tunnel. He heard angels singing. He saw Jesus. My situation, it was dark. I saw my mother-in-law. Uh, 
which, and I heard Leonard Skinner playing, okay? And so, <laughs> which is why I fought my way back twice, okay? So, and, uh, anyway. I, uh, because of that, I take a lot of medications. I take 13 pills every day, okay? Every other day, I take 15 pills. I, I have a different regimen every other day. I take a different type. Now, if my wife were here, she would tell you. She would say, you tell them the truth. Okay. They aren't all pills that were given to me by doctors, okay? Uh, two of them were given to me by legitimate medical professionals, the others were given to me by people like you across the country who said, if you will take this, you will get better, okay? My, my good buddy Gordon Douglas, his wife gave me shark cartilage tablets, 1,200 shark cartilage tablets. They're a dollar a piece at GNC, $1,200 worth of medicine. I'm taking them to be a good steward. Do you know what I'm saying? Are, are, are they helping you any? I don't know. I'm swimming faster than I've ever swam before. But the heart, I don't know, okay? I have two ladies from the essential oil companies. Where's my essential oil ladies in the room? I know you're here, okay? Right, okay. Now, uh, you know about this, but they don't. These essential oil ladies have all these healing oils, okay? And they actually, some of them, don't just rub the oil on. They will make pills. They will buy empty pills. Am I right with this? Okay. They will buy empty pills and put droplets of oil in them and seal them. And, and they send them to me through the mail, which I believe is a federal offense. <laughs> and I take them. Okay. Um, now I don't know. I can't pronounce one single oil that you put in the things, except the one oil that I know that I take is frankincense. Okay. I know that I take every day, I take a frankincense oil, which I know from my time in seminary that that's for my burial, okay? Which kind of bothers me, okay? I, I don't think that should be in a get better oil. I think that should be in a goodbye oil. You know what I'm saying? Um, I tell you this because uh, when I'm on the road, I have a system. I take my pill box, I rubber band it around my cell phone, and when the cell phone goes off in the morning, as it will tomorrow morning, I'll be getting up at 3 o'clock tomorrow morning, and I'll be headed to the airport. I've got the 520 flight out of Tampa tomorrow morning. And so, uh, but it, my pill box will be around the thing. I will take my pills first thing, get ready, and go in, okay? Well, I was home, and when I'm home for a couple days, I don't do the system because I'm not waking up early to get to the airport. So I'm home, and my wife will lay them out in a little bowl. She puts them in a little bowl. She puts them right next to the refrigerator because she says she knows I'm bound to go there a couple times during the day, okay? And uh, so, but anyway. And so it, it, I went the whole day and forgot to take my pills. Yeah, and, and so uh, I went to bed forgot to take my pills, fell asleep, forgot to take my pills, woke up at 12 o'clock at night, <gasps> I forgot to take my pills. So I slipped in quietly into the kitchen, opened the refrigerator door, and in the glow of the refrigerator, I began to take my 15 pills, okay? You can't take 15 pills in one swallow. I've tried, okay? I can't do it, okay? I take mine in like three groups of seven, and uh It took you a minute, but I know you went to Hardy County High, but that's okay. All right. That's a pretty good delay for Hardy County. All right. That's a, no, that was good. You got, you, it's, all, it's all right. It's all right. So I went to Polk County. Same deal. Okay. And so, yeah, yeah, exactly. I know. I know. And so, anyway, so I began to swallow my pills, uh, and, and then I was going to chase it down with some pizza in there that was cold because you shouldn't take pills on an empty stomach. I just, you know, you know I just, it's in the Bible, and uh, it's in the book of Ezekiel. And, uh, and so anyway, as I'm taking my pills, I realized that two of the pills had fallen on the floor. Now, we have young kids, so we have a rule at our house. If something falls on the floor, we believe you have a short amount of time in which to pick it up, still considered clean. Do you know what I'm talking about? At our house, that's 45 minutes. So anyway... Uh, <laughs> I see the two pills down there. I reach down to grab the scoop them up, pop them in my mouth, swallow, slip back into bed. Nobody anyway. Everybody sound asleep. Nobody didn't wake up at all. Okay. Slip back in. And I'm laying there trying to get back to sleep. Okay. I don't know what you do to get to sleep. Some people count sheep. Okay. I like to, I like to count the, all the books of the Bible. I like to go through books of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, all the way, always like all 45 of them. And, and I go through there and uh, some of you still hadn't got that one. Okay. Just uh, 
Work with them, Pastor. Work with them, okay? So anyway, uh, and I'm going through. But instead of falling asleep, I started getting indigestion. And I went quickly from indigestion to pain, okay? And I went from pain to horrible discomfort. And as a man, I knew that I should not deal with this by myself. Do you know what I'm talking about? And, and so I, I leaned over to my help meet unto the Lord, my, my wonderful wife. We have been married 31 years consecutively, okay? You know what I'm talking about. And so I, I reached over to her and I shook her arm and I said, baby, wake up. I'm not feeling well at all. To which my wife, this help meet, the love of my life, my childhood sweetheart, says to me, Roll over and go to sleep. You'll feel better in the morning. Okay, that's what, that's what I got. That, that, that was not the level. That was not the level of care that I expect after 31 years of faithful marriage. You know what I'm talking about? That, that, and I started to get mad. I started to get angry about it, but I had read that book called The Bait of the Enemy, and I said, no, I'm not going to do it. What would Jesus do? And I thought Jesus would send her to hell right now is what he would do. No, 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 not, not really, not really. I, just, I said, no, Jesus, Jesus would give her a second chance. Amen, right? A sec He'd give her a second chance. That's right. So, so I thought about this and I said, you know what? Let, I'll, she was asleep. I'll put a little, uh, I'll put a little psychology on it, okay? Uh, and I, I don't know a lot about psychology. I know a little bit about it because my wife, my wife uh, has her master's degree in orchestral conducting, okay? And you say, what's that have to do with psychology? Uh, she has a minor in psychology because orchestral conducting for a female is not the most employable position in the world, okay? Let's just be honest with you, but I'm not bitter. And so, uh, so I, I, she has done a lot of counseling with her counseling side of that. And, and though I have not been involved with that, I have accidentally overheard conversations on the phone. Uh, not, not to be nosy, but just so I could pray more effectively. You know what I'm talking about. All about caring and sharing, reaching and teaching, loving and shoving. Hallelujah. And so anyway... Uh, so I thought, okay, put a little psychology to this. And I, I got it. I got it. I reached over and I shook her arm and I said, baby, feel my stomach. Something is kicking. Because she would do that to me all through the pregnancies, right? She would wake me up at 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, baby, feel my stomach. And, and men, you, how many remember that? Men, you remember that. when they, Right. And, and, and what would you do? What would you do? You reach over, you put your hand on the stomach, and you go, oh. Praise God. We didn't feel a thing, ladies. I'm just going to be honest with you. We didn't feel a thing, but we pretended to because we loved you. We love God. We love the child. Okay? You should do it back. Okay? That's all I'm saying. It's turnabout time. And I said, wake up. Feel my stomach. Something is kicking. To which my wife responds, quit whining out of the mouth of a Christian woman. Quit whining, roll over and go to sleep. Now I'm angry. Now I'm laying right over at the edge of my bed, right there at the edge of mine. I'm just talking to myself. You have no, she's already snoring again, okay? I'm just talking, you have no idea how sick I am. I'm sick. I'm not, not just whining. I'm not just going to get better anymore. In fact, I hope I die. Just to prove to you and your mother. <laughs> Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. I got up, I got dressed, I got in my car. Went two and a half miles down the road to Lakeland Regional Medical Center. You all know where it's at. Went into the emergency room, experienced a miracle right there in the emergency. Walked in the emergency room and there was nobody in there but me. You know that's a miracle, right? Okay? Yeah, that never happens. <laughs> you got to schedule an emergency anymore, I'll tell you, if you want to see it. And so, anyway, went in there and uh, they took me in the back room. And all of a sudden, in the door walks three people. First walks Dr. Barrett. Dr. Barrett has been, been a doctor's work with, he's, he was there for the birth of three of my four kids, okay? Behind Dr. Barrett is a young doctor. He's a doctor from University of South Florida, learning to be a doctor from Dr. Barrett there in the emergency room. Behind him, the ultrasound nurse pushing an ultrasound machine, one of those mini x-ray with the probe thingies right there. And they come in the room and they start probing my body. At this point, we don't know. We're just exploratory. They're probing my, my body, my intestinal tract. They're asking me questions. Mr. Williams, have you had an operation recently? I said, no, no, last operation I had uh, 27 years ago, uh, Stouter Memorial Hospital, Troy, Ohio, an emergency appendectomy. Why do you ask? And he moved the probe right up in here, and he turned the screen around. They normally don't show you a lot of that stuff. And he turned the screen around and said, Mr. Williams, there's appearing to be 
two obstructions, two six-inch sponge-like materials in your intestinal tract. And if you'd had an operation, I'd almost be assured that they, that, that they had left some sponges in you or some way. And the young doctor says, one of the sponges looks like a dinosaur, okay? And... and <laughs> Don't get ahead of me, people. You already know more than I knew at the time. They finished scanning me. They left the room, okay? They left the room. I think they went out to the big room out there where they could look up on Google to see what they think I might have because I've got that new Google HMO and I get a three-second opinion from Bing. But anyway, and uh, so anyway, they went out there. And when they went out there, I got on my phone. And I got on my phone, and I called my wife, and I woke her up a second time. And I woke her up, and, and I said, I'm not just going to get better in the morning. I'm not just whining. I have two sponges in me, two sp six-inch sponges in my intestinal tract. And the young doctor says, one of them looks like a dinosaur. <laughs> to which my wife, the love of my life, my help me unto the Lord, says, we went to the dollar store today. Have you ever had somebody join your conversation that knew nothing about what you were talking about and they just plop right in? Yeah, yeah. It, it was like that. I, I said, baby, baby, wake up. I'm at the emergency room, the ER. Er, I, I'm here. Dr. Barrett is here. Young doctor from USF, the nurse. They just did an ultrasound test on me. I have a T-Rex in my intestines. She said, I heard you, silly. We went to the dollar store, and your middle son, Coleman, with his dollar, bought four little green pills that when you throw them in water, six minutes later, they expand to six-inch foam dinosaurs. He lost two of the pills. I said, I will call you back. I hid my phone so they wouldn't take it away from me. I hid my phone, pushed that button. Let me tell you, they're quick in the, nurse, in the emergency room. They're a lot quicker than they are in the rest of the hospital. I pushed that button 20 seconds later. Everybody, yes, Mr. Williams, are you okay? And I said, ha, ha, ha. I think I might be able to shed a little light on the situation. And I told them what my wife had told me. And they started laughing at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not, not, not just laughing. No, calling other people in other parts of the emergency room, other parts of the hospital even, to come down to the emergency room where they would scan my body and laugh. The, the, they would hold the probe right there and the young doctor do like this. He'd go, look, it looks like the dinosaurs are running. That's what they... <laughs> Finally, I said, okay, ha, 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 what do you have to do? Do you have to pump my stomach? Now, you're probably saying, why did you say that? I'll tell you why. Because I used to watch Emergency Squad 51. Remember that show? And I know if you got a stomach problem, what do you do? You start an IV with, with WD-40. <laughs> right? Transport to Rampart, pump the stomach. Right there. One, two, three. The trifecta of health right there. I said, what do you have to do? Do you have to pump my stomach? Now, for those of you, I noticed a couple of you nodded when I said Dr. Barrett. You remember Dr. Barrett? Barrett was a great guy. Loved Dr. Barrett. Uh, but he had the, the, he didn't have a, a normal voice. He had a doctor disposition. The birth of three children, never been able to make him laugh. He was always in doctoral mode. I said, do you have to pump my stomach? And he said, no, I believe, given the hypothesis that you have uh, ascribed as a possibility, we feel that more than likely the sponge material being a pH of nature and uh, the acidic value of the stomach, which would grow ever increasingly as it passed farther along the intestinal tract, we believe that the said same bypass, who says said same anymore? You know, the said same bypass would find itself dissipating in a matter of hours, given the time and the breakdown and the circumference of each individual sponge. I had no idea what he was talking about. 
and, and the young doctor realized that, okay? And normally I wouldn't tell you this, and I didn't tell you this story this morning because it's not a Sunday morning story, because the young doctor, I do not believe he was a Christian, okay? Because if he was, he would not have said what he said, okay? But Barrett tells me this information. I had no idea what he meant. And the young doctor leaned over to me and he said, Mr. Williams, I believe what Dr. Barrett is trying to tell you is you're going to have a Jurassic poop. Okay, that's, that, that's, that's what he said. That's, he said it. I don't think he was a Christian. I think, I think he was like Methodist or something like that. We have got to learn to laugh, folks. You know, uh, I, I never set out to be a comedian. I, it just funny stuff happens to me. It just happens. You got to learn to enjoy the ride. I had a lady come up to me one time. She said, well, obviously you can laugh all the time, Brother Williams, because you've not had the pain in your life that I've had in my life or the pain in your life other people have had in their lives. Because if you've had that kind of pain in your life, you would not be able to laugh all the time. And I'm thinking if I had that voice, I couldn't laugh all the time. <laughs> you win, ma'am. You know, maybe I haven't had the pain that other people have had, but I tell you, I've had kidney stones. You ever had? Who's had kidney stones? You had kidneys? You know what I'm talking? They'll make a Baptist speak in tongues. I'm serious. <laughs> Woo! I, I'm a deacon in the Baptist church. I was trying to get Benny Hinn on the cell phone. I didn't care. I didn't care if they kicked me off the deacon board. I just wanted that puppy out. I didn't care who got it out. <laughs> Woo! Two o'clock in the morning, sat straight up in bed. I thought my wife had shot me. Oh. I sat up. I, I said, baby, call 911. She went to call 911. I was able to help myself out of the bed and onto the floor. Do you know what I'm talking about? Woke up five minutes later. Bruce, five minutes later in an ambulance in front of the house with, with an EMT trying to start an IV right there. Trying, trying to start uh, right there. Is that, nurse lady, is that just the most painful spot y'all can find? Is that what it is right there? Trying, trying, did you hear? Try nine times, nine, nine, seven, eight, nine. I said, look, get Jimi Hendrix in here. He can find a vein. And come uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Too soon, was that too soon? Is it too soon? Sorry. Sorry, I'll use Michael Jackson next time. All right. Yeah, so, <laughs> man, you know, folks, <laughs> I looked up. He's shaking like this. I looked up at him. <laughs> he said, I'm so sorry, sir. I'm so sorry. This is my first night on the job. <laughs> I, I've never been in that much pain. I'm in a fetal position. I looked at him. I said, that's going to be real funny <laughs> in about three days. <laughs> And, and isn't that the way it is? We get angry with stuff. We get mad. Out of the, we're laughing, telling our friends about it. Three days later, well, three weeks. Okay, three months, three years, three years later. Wouldn't it be great? Think about this. Wouldn't it be great if we could learn to laugh in the middle of the mess instead of having to wait for three days or three weeks or three years? How could our, you know what? How could our blood pressure be better? How could our heart be better? You know what I'm saying? We have got to learn to laugh. God wants us to laugh. A merry heart does good like a mess. I'm going to say that over and over again until we get it. It's scripture. It's true, okay? Listen to me. You're going to hear two serious points tonight, okay? If you want to know what the serious part is, tonight, that way if you need to leave early, okay? Right there. And uh, here, here it is. Point number one, life is too short not to laugh. Can I get an amen? Point number two, life is too long not to laugh. Amen? Okay? It, when you get older, you'll understand that. You young folks won't understand it right now. Okay, we have to learn to laugh. I was at the Springs Church in Ocala, Florida. You ever, you ever play up at the Springs Church? Pretty beautiful church right here where, where y'all have the, the baptistry and the, and the fish tank here. Uh, they have, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, it looks like a fish tank, folks. I'm just saying, hey, group from the other church, doesn't it look like a big fish tank up here? Don't you want to see, you feel like you're in Bass Pro Shops? You know what I'm talking about? It's like... <laughs> That bass is also a drummer. Okay, right there, you know. Springs Church of Cala, Florida. Right here is a 40-foot rock wall. It's a waterfall. 40-foot waterfall. Beautiful. But when I came in to do the sound check, it wasn't a waterfall. It was a rock wall. They hadn't turned it on. But I'm in the back room waiting to come out. And they turn on the waterfall, and I walk out there and start talking. 
with 40 foot of water running behind me. Folks, I'm 55 years of age. You can't run water behind me. Can I get an amen? Can I get a witness? Woo, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, man. <laughs> all of a sudden, I'm dancing around up here like this. And all of a sudden, I realize it's that waterfall. I looked up at the sound man. I looked up and I said, brother, you're going to have to turn the waterfall off or we're going to have three unscheduled intermissions today. Okay. Well, he turned it off for me. It's great. One of the deacons came up to me afterwards. He, go, he leans in. He goes, Brother Williams, that waterfall's the best $40,000 we ever spent. Since we put in the waterfall, preacher ain't gone longer than 12 minutes on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> we got to we got to learn to laugh. We got to learn to lighten up. We got to learn to enjoy the ride. Humor is out there. It's waiting for us. Just look for it, okay? It's in your car. Pop the hood of your car. I've been telling this for 25 years. Some of you remember me remember this. I've been tell, talking about this, how stupidity is all around. Pop the hood of your car. Look on the battery. It will give you some warnings. There's a warning, no sparks, no flames, no smoking. Then it will say on the battery, it will say, do not drink battery acid. Have you ever been so thirsty <laughs> driving to Orlando that you said, pull the car over, pop the hood, get me a straw? You know what I'm saying? It's not going to, but, but somebody, it did. So they had to put a warning on it. Be thankful that it ain't you. You know what I'm saying? Oh man, crazy stuff. I was in Colorado. Anybody here from Colorado? Any Colorado people here? Good. Let's talk about them. <laughs> That'd be the Christian thing to do. You see, 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 it'd only be gossip if I didn't ask first if they were here. Yes, yeah, so, all right. I was in Colorado. Colorado had just, it we just came off of the Christmas break after school. And the Colorado Board of Education. Now, I know some of you think you know what I'm going to talk about. Colorado. I'm not. I'm not going to talk about that at all. That's obvious. I'm not going to bring that up. <laughs> you got a lot of folks with a testimony in this room, brother. Okay. All right. Colorado Board of Education met, wanted to make schools safer. They did a number of good things, but out of those 10 things, you can look them up online. I don't make this stuff up, folks. It's true stories. Okay. Look it up. Out of those 10 things that they imposed to make it safer for the kids, one is they said that kids 12 years and under could not play dodgeball anymore. Okay, no more dodgeball. And on behalf of fat band students everywhere, thank God. Okay, thank God. Finally, finally. You ever try to run holding on to a baritone horn? I'm just saying, shut up unless you have. It's not fun when your parents can't afford the insurance. Okay, that's what I'm saying. My favorite one was this. Kids sixth grade and under would no longer be allowed to participate in tag. Did you hear me? Tag, freeze tag, TV tag, tag you're at. No more tag, sixth grade and under. Couple of observations here, two of them. Number one, what kind of sissies are they raising in Colorado, okay? When tag is too dangerous to play. Tag, okay, tag, come on, forget tag. I grew up with lawn darts. How many remember lawn darts? Remember those? Yeah, uh-huh, miniature Zulu javelins, yeah. That we'd give to a seven-year-old, say, go out in the front yard, throw them, try to get in that circle down there with your baby sister standing right there. <laughs> Who got hit with a lawn dart? Anybody get hit with a lawn dart? Okay, you know what I'm talking about, right? You got hit with a lawn dart. Sir, where'd you get hit? See, he can't even talk. That's how bad, how bad it hit him. Right there, it hit him hard. Hit him. We know where it hit you. All right, there we go. All right. <laughs> Where did it hit you? The foot or the leg? That's where most, where, where, yeah, right there. Yeah, because you'll be standing there right in front of that circle just thinking your friend down there is an amazing shot right there, right there. Yeah, and it would come in and just be right there. Yeah, I, I got hit. I got hit. Uh, take you, Everybody take your right finger. Reach right up here. Feel that little, there's a little indentation right there on your shoulder blade. Little, 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 little so you can kind of push in there. You feel that? If you're fortunate enough to get hit by a lawn dart coming down from 40 foot in the air, I'll explain this in a minute and it hits you right there, it'll penetrate about three and a half inches, okay? We're not breaking a major artery or anything like that. It hurt like a monkey though, I'll tell you that, okay? But penetrate about three and a half inches, it'll immediately stop when it reaches that lawn dart safety washer. Praise God for the safety washer, okay? 
Without that, it could pass through you, kill somebody in Australia. That's all I'm saying, okay? Now, you're probably saying, Mike, how did that happen? Thank you for asking. I'll tell you how it happened. My cousins were over, okay? My cousins were over. That's all I need to say for some of you who are my generation, for you younger generation. Let me explain this. My, it was a Friday night. My cousins were over at the house. It was kind of like a family reunion night, okay? It was, it was 1230 at night. Mom and dad, aunts and uncles, they are at the kitchen table fellowshipping, okay? My cousins and I are bored. Why are we bored? Because the television stations... All three of them, remember that? All three of them had gone off. Right, yeah. I know you young people are going, no way, it didn't. It didn't happen. The apocalypse right there. No, no. Right, back then we had three stations. They went off at 1230, right there, okay? That's what, what would happen is the last show would go off. They, they would show a picture of the color bars. Remember the color bars right there? Or black and white bars at my house, okay? But color bars, okay? And, and then they would show a video of a flag blowing in the breeze, and they would play the national anthem. Remember that, okay? Right. And, and then it would just go beep, which would scare you if you woke up because you'd think you flatlined, okay? I'm saying. <laughs> My cousins and I were bored. Mom and dad, aunts and uncles, they're just still going at it at the kitchen table. We decided to go out to the front yard. It was an overcast night. It was dark. You couldn't see the sky. You couldn't see the stars. You could not see the moon. Ground fog rolling in. You know how the ground fog is. You just occasionally see lightning bug here and there. We were out there. My cousin had just had his birthday. For his birthday, he received a brand new set of lawn darts. Twelve lawn darts. Four cousins. Each of us had a couple in our hand. We came up with a game. We would stand in a circle holding as many lawn darts as we could. Count to three and throw them with all of our might straight up into the air. And run around in a circle experiencing the grace of God in our life. It was a game we called Calvinism. That's how I took the lawn dart right there. And it's one thing to get hit on the foot. It's another thing to have a red lawn dart sticking out of your shoulder. Ah, right there, okay? I was tripping out, okay? I was, I was, I was, like, when, when something like that, you just, you got to get mom and dad. You know what? I, I'm running for the house to get mom and dad. My cousins are trying to stop me. Oh, you know why they're trying to stop me. Yeah, same reason you would have tried to stop me. You know the rule back then. One kid gets hurt, two or three more getting a whooping for it. Are you right? You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? I broke free. I go running in the house. Mom and dad and the lawn dart still sticking right out of my shoulder right there. I'm like, I couldn't even talk. I'm like, ah, ah, ah. My dad looked at me. He said, well, pull it out and walk it off. That's what he said. <laughs> walk it. Yeah, I'm from the walk it off generation. Yeah. Then mom put that Macare chrome on there. Remember that orange stuff right there? Macare, you kids don't know about it because they took it off the market because it could kill people. It was poison. <laughs> Macare chrome, iodine. It was pepper spray before it went aerosol. Are you with me? Do you remember that? It was so, so toxic, you had to put it on with a glass shard because it would melt plastic like that. You'd have to jab. Ah! Right there. <laughs> <laughs> You're my people. You know what I'm talking about. I believe that Macare chrome, iodine, methylate, whatever you call it, was designed to see if you were really hurt. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Pastor, right? You'd, you'd fall off your bike. You'd skin up your hands. You'd come in. Mom, Mom, I skinned up my hands. I can't go to school. Mom would go, let me get the iodine. Woo, hallelujah. I'm fine. I'm fine. Woo, I'm fine. I can go to school. I, I'll be okay. Right there. I'm, I'm just telling you, if, if Lazarus had had Macare chrome, he never would have been dead. That's all I'm saying. Whew. Man. We got to learn to laugh, folks. We got to lighten up. Are you having fun so far tonight? I don't want to go too much. I know you guys got, got medicine to take and stuff when you get home. And... 
and I won't go too long. I know there's a time to shut up too. All right, brother. All right. You know, uh, I, I, I like to laugh. I, I checked out. I always like to check things out and see what's on TV because, you know, you're competing against stuff. And I know that people know you, you all got your shows. OK. And, and so I, I went on and, and I know that in uh, that. Uh, what is it? CSI. Has a, has a brand new episode tonight. I know that. We'll get home in time for that, okay? And so, but uh, just, if you don't, I'll tell you right now, I went online, I looked it up, found out what's going to happen. Tonight, right at the beginning of the show, they find a body. <laughs> How many of you like MeTV? MeTV? I love Lucy's on tonight. Tonight, Lucy tries to get into Ricky's act. That's for you old folks who remember that. Yeah, she was always, okay, moving along. Yeah, he, he was funny. Then all of a sudden, it just got stupid. Yeah, it just got, it got really boring and stupid. So, hey, we, we got to laugh. I, I want us to laugh tonight. I want us to go home healthier tonight because we laughed. I want us to enjoy the vitamin that God gave us. We need to find ways to laugh. And, and let me be honest with you. I don't always succeed at it. Okay, I gotta be honest with you. I don't always succeed. I want to, brother. Brother Tom, is it Tom? Is it really Tom? Tom, I, I try to succeed. Sometimes I, I mess it. it. Tom, Tom. Apparently, Tom gets picked on a lot when he goes to comedy events, and so Tom asked me to not pick on him tonight. So, Tom, I'm not gonna pick on you tonight. Okay. Uh, but, but if this was not a comedy event, I would pick on you. Okay. So, if you will see me afterwards once I'm done. I will pick on you personally, okay? And then, then, then you won't feel like it was at the program. All right, all right. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Good to see you tonight. How you doing, buddy? What, 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 what are you, where are you from? Where are you from, though? Watch you. You came all the way up from. Well, yeah. <laughs> now you came from Wachula to Bowling Green. Woo! Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you guys got a light and everything down there, and so, yeah. Good to see you. Good to see you. No cable tonight? Cable's not working down there? What do, you, what do you do, Tom? What do you do? You're a pastor of a church? What, where, where, where do you pastor? Where do you pastor? First Christian church. So, so it's a Christian church denomination. There you, or not, no, no, you guys aren't a denomination. You're, you're, non, you're non-denominational. 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 Okay, right, right. Well, and, and it's so weird because, you know, here, here we have non-denominational churches. There's 39,935 different denominations in the United States, and non-denominational people can't find one of them they can agree with. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have time to read the outlines of each one of them, but I guess it's just quicker to go, nah, we'll just start our own area. No, good to, good to have you, brother. Thank you for coming out tonight. We got another pastor in the back, but... He disappeared. Uh, he was there. To, he, did he go to the bathroom? Did, did he go to the bathroom? Did he go to the bathroom? Oh, there he is. Okay, there. Uh, oh, okay. He's in the back. Go ahead. Enjoy. Okay. okay. All right. Take your time. Yeah, make sure there's paper under there first. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know what I like to do? I like to do this. In fact, you'll have to do this, Pastor, some Sunday, because there's always somebody every Sunday who gets up, goes to the bathroom, comes back in, okay? They'll never sit near the door, okay? They'll always sit right in the middle, and they'll go to the bathroom. Here's what you do. Wait till they get out, and they can't hear you, okay? And then say, hey, everybody, switch sides. <laughs> you know, they will come back in. I gotta go again. <laughs> why, why is it that when we're trying to sneak out of a place, we always do this? <laughs> like that makes us invisible. You know, all of a sudden we become Wonder Woman right there, you know? <laughs> anyway, now I forgot what I was talking about. Do you remember what I was talking about? Oh, oh yeah. Hey, Tommy, how you doing? That's right. I was talking about not picking on Tom. All right. I'm not going to pick on you, Brother Tom. How you doing? I got another pastor coming in. I'm going to pick on him. Pastor, come on. Let's go. It isn't good visitor etiquette. Okay. All right. Could you hear us in here? Because we could hear you. 
<laughs> well, welcome back, Pastor. You can tell they're Baptists because they grabbed the back row back there. All right. Good to see you guys. You know, I, I don't always find the funny. There are some times when I miss it. I was, I'd flown into Lexington, Kentucky, Bluegrass International Airport, got into my rental car, started down the parkway there, coming up to a red light, getting ready to turn right onto the Highway 65. There's a red light. Everybody say red light. red light. There's a car in front of me. You understand? Car in front of me. Red light. Car in front of me. Okay. And um, I'm stopped at the red light and I'm listening to the radio. It, when I travel, I try to turn on Christian radio. And the reason I do that is because I like to fill my mind with good things. See, I have to speak a lot and I don't get to sit under great preaching a lot. And, and so I try to use the radio to fill my mind with good stuff. We need to think on good things. We need to renew our minds daily, the scripture says, okay? And so I was, the station that I found was a station that came out of Chicago, Illinois, from an organization called Moody Bible Institute. Now, I know Moody has a station over here, too, at Keswick, and they kind of play a little more contemporary. This was one of the older style Moody stations that played the songs that I grew up singing. You know what I'm talking about? You, you, you old, old school, okay? Chip, you know what I'm talking about. Back when they, remember back when they would trust you to hold 450 songs in your own hand? Remember when they would trust you to hold the book, okay? Yeah. Now apparently they're afraid you're going to steal them or something like that, okay? Yeah, okay. You know, they, they, everything, everything's projected up on the, up on the walls. And, and so uh, back then, okay, the church I grew up in, Pastor, we wouldn't have had a movie screen in the church. Or you know what I'm talking about? That would have been bringing Hollywood weird into the house of God, you know? We would not show a, a movie screen up there. But we did serve communion in shot glasses. That always bothered me, okay? That's, that's, yes. <laughs> It's kind of a double standard right there. It's just, <laughs> hey, you hush up. If it wasn't for prohibition, we wouldn't have NASCAR. Okay, so anyway. Uh, <laughs> finally got an amen out of this, brother. All right, amen, amen, brother, amen. All right, so anyway, um, I'm sitting behind his car, and on comes a song that I grew up singing in the church. Now, when I say singing in church, Bruce, you'll understand this. We sing different in the church nowadays. Music is different. The way we phrase our words nowadays, have you noticed all the young singers are out of breath? You know what I mean? It's a shout to the Lord, all the earth. Let, you know, it's like you guys need to quit smoking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, young kids singing it. They can run a 5K but can't sing three words without, <gasps> you know. So, no, it, it, if that's your style, God bless you. Just keep it real. Keep it real, okay? And, and so anyway, but I started singing it the way mom and dad taught me to sing it. My hands are on the wheel. Red light. When peace like a river attendeth my way. When sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Amen. Amen. I've been, oh, no, no. <laughs> Y'all need to get out more. Uh, and I finished the first verse and realized the light had turned green. But the guy in front of me is sitting there. And me, Mr. Fine Funny, Mr. Fine Joy, went from it is well with my soul immediately to Ack! I shouted out this, you've done it too. Gas is on the right. Have you done that one? Gas, come on, let's go, let's go, move it. Ack, ack. Jesus is coming back. Like to get to Walmart before he gets here. Let's go. The guy looks quickly in the rear view mirror. I'm He steps on the gas. I step on the gas and drop right back into it is well. We've got to learn to laugh. We've got to learn to laugh. 
You're laughing tonight. I'm glad you're laughing tonight. We, we need to laugh. It's good for us tonight. Merry heart, good medicine. Enjoy the medicine. You can't, you can't take too much of it. You don't have to wait for four hours to laugh again. Doesn't have that 45 second list of side effects for laughter. You don't have to worry about laughing too much and getting explosive diarrhea or anything like that. You just, uh. what's, what's up with those medicine commercials nowadays? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> They'll take three minutes and tell you what you could get from this and then go, but you could have your headache be a little bit less. <sighs> oh, um, this morning I explained to you what my wife and I did eight years ago. And tonight I want to take you for a minute there. We're going to come back and laugh a little bit more, but I want to take you there for just a minute. We run a program where we rescue and help rescue traffic girls. Uh, we have educational programs to give them job opportunities to get them off of the street and to rescue little boys, keep them off the street. Two and a half years ago, every morning we would get in the vehicle and we would pray and we'd say, God, what do you want us to do today? Besides the list of stuff, what do you want us to see on the way, to do on the way? Who do you want us to talk to on the way? Who do you want us to touch? God, what do you want us to do? I heard a sermon about that recently. Good, some of you remember. <laughs> Hush. And we drove to the garbage dump because we heard that there was a ministry that was working there that was feeding people who were living at a garbage dump. And we drove in there. It's about a mile back off the road. Horrible conditions. People living all over the side. Pieces of plastic they've strung up. And we went back and began to talk to the people and they said, well, there was a ministry that was here about a year ago, but one day they left and they've never been back. And what do you do, Pastor? You know, I believe that the Bible says that the steps of God's people are ordered by the Lord. So there's a reason we went back there that day and we had never done that before. And then you have to decide what you're going to do. And we went home and we prayed and we said, God, what do you want us to do about it? We did not have a budget for this. But we said, God, we'll start. We'll do something. And the next week we whipped up a big, huge batch of Rice, who would have thought it out uh, there? And beans and chicken and styrofoam cups and spoons. And we went out there and we fed about 80 people. Um, the garbage dump is different than it is here. Here, I remember when I was a kid, we used to go to the dump to find stuff. You know, you'd take a load of trash, you'd pick up a good lawnmower out there while you were there. I mean, honestly. But in the Dominican Republic, it's not that way. Because they're poor, they don't throw away anything good. The other thing that makes the garbage dump extremely unique is the sense that in the Dominican Republic, they do not throw their toilet paper in the toilet. Their toilets do not have the septic systems that ours do. So they throw the toilet paper in the trash. So half of what's there is basically an open sewer. And here we find little boys and little girls and their parents waiting for the next truck to come in, hoping that a truck from a hotel will come in. Let, let, let me take you there tonight. They're, they're going to pull the lights down. We can watch some scenes here. Uh, that's uh, some of the kids we minister to. By the way, that's my wife, Teresa, on the left, in case you were wondering, right there. Um, don't go too fast, brothers. Uh, I, I want you to look at something here before. You can go on. Go, on, go, ahead, go ahead there. Do um, you see the age of the lady out there? She's 
She's about 55, 56 years old. You see the silhouette of the young boy right there? Every age. They're looking through trying to find something to eat. Go ahead to another slide. Here they are lined up at our truck. On top of the truck is Pastor Narcisal. He gets up there with this battery-operated PA system that we have, and he preaches and shares Jesus Christ. And some of those ladies and some of those men, when he's preaching, will just stand out there in front of that truck and just quietly lift their hands like this and lift their faces to God and sing praises as he's preaching. Pastor, I don't know that I could do that. They inspire me. This is a special day out of the dump. It's hot dog day. They're in line. There's a lot of them still working because when they're out, when a truck comes in and they dump, they stay at that truck and clean out everything before they come up. They know we'll wait for them. They know we won't leave. Everybody will eat. And we also have a big birthday cake. A lot of these folks don't even know when their birthday was. And so once a month, we get a birthday cake, and everybody gets a birthday cake, and we sing happy birthday to let them know that their life matters to God. Go ahead to another slide, if you would. Here's one of their houses. That's where they live. Pile it up. Hide under there for the rain. You notice in the background? In December, we were there. Um, with some folks from Rome, Georgia. And uh, as we're standing there, there's a cruise ship going across in the, in the distance. And it just, it, it just so affected our world to see that. So close, so close. Go ahead to the next one. I stopped on a little boy's. His name is Peter. I said, hey, buddy, what do you got in the bucket? What'd you find today? Because usually he's looking around for metal. He didn't find any metal, but he found five biscuits and some meat product. Go to the next. There's a family. That tree is their house. I'm stopping those cups that they're holding in their hand or what, what our soup is in. Go ahead to the next one. Here's a little boy who's pretty happy. He just came between the trucks is where this particular day a team was in, and he has a bag. Inside that bag is a pair of $1 flip-flops from Target, a can of tuna, some gummy bears. As he came through, they told him a little story, put that little cross around his neck, put a banana in his pocket. You see him there in the left pocket? And put a peanut butter sandwich in his hand. And he's a happy young man. Go ahead to the next, if you would. All ages. Children are born there. Children die there. Go to the next. Here you can see we had just, uh, you can see their faces. They're staring at that. The first young man's getting that first cup as it comes out of soup. We had uh, the fellow in the back in the middle has the big smile on his face. Uh, he had just prayed an amazing prayer. He's one of the people who lived there. Prayed an amazing prayer of thank you for the food that day. Go ahead to the next one. Here's some boys who have slid underneath our big truck to get shade because it's the only place to get shade. Go, go ahead to the next one. Hmm. Do you see the age differences there? Reaching up, hoping to get a flip-flop to get a shoe. The food that they get is stuff that comes from the hotels. In case you're wondering, where does the food come from? It comes from the hotel. For instance, maybe in the afternoon, they're preparing for the evening meal, so they clean the chickens, and they take all the parts that they can't use, and they throw them into the trash. They cook dinner, and then after dinner, they take that trash out, and they throw it in the dumpster. It sits in the dumpster overnight where the rats get in there and eat through it. Then the next morning, the sun rises and bakes that stuff to about 11 o'clock, and it gets picked up there and taken out to the, in, in that garbage truck, that filthy garbage truck, taken out and dumped. And that's what they're going to eat. Folks, tonight, I'm not asking you to uh, give tonight to Mike Williams. I'm not asking you to um, give a nice offering because Mike was funny. 
I told the pastor, I will come down here if you will help me feed some of these people. That's what I'm asking you to do tonight. Um, it costs us $100 a day to feed about 120 people. Can you do a day? Could you feed 120 people who live at a garbage dump for a day? Seniors, there, there's no social security. There's no retirement. A little over half of these people are earthquake survivors from Haiti who lost everything, came to the Dominican Republic hoping for another chance. And there was nothing and they migrated out to the stump. Can you help us feed it? Maybe you say, Mike, I, I really, I can't, I can't do a whole day. Can you do half of a day? I know some of you young folks are here and you go, man, I, I barely have enough money to eat at McDonald's on the way home. Could, could, you, could you get a happy meal and help us with a little bit? Maybe some of you could get a week or a month. Just know that this is what it's going for. Uh, tonight, they can, they, Pastor, they could write the checks to the church or, or okay, yeah, just, just write it to uh, First Baptist uh, Bowling Green. Or, or if you want to make it out, if you want to do it the other way, you can make it directly to uh, cups of cold water, cups of cold water. And I'd hope that you'd friend us on Facebook so you can follow the, the people you'd, you'd be feeding. One, one more picture if you don't mind. It's interesting, when Jesus described hell, do you remember that in the scriptures? He described it as the garbage dump out of the city where the worms never die, they're always there and the fire is not quenched. There's, there's a, always a muck fire that burns below. There's two boys going through the burnout. Sometimes that muck fire will flare up and toast everything they have out there. And they're going through, they're looking for something. Tonight, I'm gonna ask you to pray. I'm gonna tell you this. You, if you weren't here this morning, you won't understand. But if you were, you will. I don't need you to pray and tell God that they're there. He knows. He has walked with me out there. I would ask you to pray tonight. Father, what would you have me do to say thank you? Would you bow with me in prayer and then we're gonna pass some plates and then we're gonna sing some songs and, and celebrate because people are gonna to eat tonight because of this. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Heavenly Father, tonight, thank you. Thank you for calling us your children. Thank you for calling us your own. Thank you for feeding us today and for feeding our families and for feeding us for a long time. And Father, right now, my, my, my friends, new friends and old friends, want to hear from you what you would have them do. Father, I pray that you would speak to them clearly. And Father, we will use this to feed people. And in doing so, we know according to your word that we are feeding you. Bless this offering now, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hang on just a second, guys. Give them just a minute to, if they're writing a check, you can write it out to the church. Uh, if you're, you can also write it out to Cups of Cold Water. And before they turn around, let me tell you this. Maybe if you're here and you can get on Facebook, we'd love for you to friend Cups, C-U-P-S, Cups of Cold Water. Say that with me, Cups of Cold Water. Three times we got it memorized, Cups of Cold Water, Cups of Cold cold water, okay? And I'd love for you to friend and follow us. And in fact, I want to also extend to you an official invitation to come down and visit. So if you'd ever like to come down, you don't. we don't need a, a special notice. You can drop down anytime you want to, and you can come down any day, six days a week, and walk into the dump with us and see where you're feeding, okay? Fair enough. Gentlemen, thank you. Now go ahead and pass that out. And if you need extra time, just wait afterwards. I'll be in the back too. And good. So we're going to, we're going to have some fun. And thank you tonight for being a part, a part of that. All right. Uh, good. good.
I'm going to get my, I know we're supposed to have music playing during, just hum, everybody hum, just hum or something. We will do that. Good. I used to drink Diet Coke all the time, but Diet Coke has a chemical in it uh, called aspartame, and it's not real good for people who do what I do to drink Diet Coke, because uh, it causes short-term memory loss, and and so you know it's not real good for people to get up like me to get up in front of people and go, uh, okay, and so and so anyway. So, so I quit drinking Diet Coke. Oh. Oh. oh, that's good. I used to drink Diet Coke all the time. I know. <laughs> the Diet Coke has a chemical in it. <laughs> My favorite part right now is there are people who are going, he just said that. He just said that. Check the time because I did go. I did go late. Oh man, I got to move along. Okay, they need to start giving IV on my way in the door. Okay, Dad's nurse. There, just. All right, all right. Let's let's get a guitar out of here. Hey, hang on, I'm almost plugged in, brother. Hang on, one second. One second. Okay, now now you can mute it. <laughs> Good. It, it, it's a little guitar. <laughs> People are looking up here going, whoa, he's huge. And so, anyway, um, so, right, anyway, okay. What, what kind of music do you like? I can do any kind of music. What do you like? <laughs> if I leave this church tomorrow Will you still send me a tithing envelope? Write that down. I might use that again someplace there. Um, I, I, I like to play around with music. I, I'm not a really good player, but I, I like to uh, um, just have a little fun. Uh, let's see. Love song. I used to drink a lot of Diet Coke, and Diet Coke... I finally got over you Finally got over you Finally got over you But I had to put my truck in four-wheel drive Okay, that's, that's wrong, that's wrong how many country music? Where's our country music fans? Country music fans? Let's see. Where's bluegrass fans? I need bluegrass fans. Country western fans. Any country western? One. Okay, beautiful. Beautiful. One. And he's seven right there. Beautiful. Seven. People think country and bluegrass, country western are all the same. It's not. They're very different. Very different types of music. For those of you who don't know, I'm going to explain it to you very quickly. I'm going to give you an example, a little musical tour here of what real country music is, what real country music isn't. Okay, here. Real country music. True country music. Classic country music. <laughs> Hello, darling. Good to see ya. It's been a long time. You're just as lovely as you used to be. Right? True country music. Conway Twitty, 1974. Now, 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 yeah, yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Bluegrass, 
bluegrass very different. Hello, cousin. Good to see you. Hello, Trigger. Anyway, so uh, let's see. I still got the hat wrist. <laughs> I do not. The girl back there goes, he looks like Monica Lewinsky. I, I... up in the air up ahead in the distance so bright yellow light my stomach churned and moaned real loud had to eat for the night my waitress had a tattoo of the menu in red when she turned and smiled at me not a tooth in her head brown polyester fits her kind of tight but at 3.30 in the morning she looked alright welcome to the Waffle House in Bartow any rap music fans in the room rap music I say, whoa, whoa yeah bowling green big rap group area here down here i wanted to combine country music and rap music together and call it <laughs> rap tree rap tree but what if you could what if you could what if you could what if you could Big truck tires keep on turning But you got spinners on them rims Singing songs about the south side With a girl named Lil' Kim See, I got a hood, but it's on the front of my truck And I can pop a cap But it's in an eight-point buck I wear jeans that fit me, they don't go halfway down my back When I say ho, ho, I'm talking about a snack <laughs> <laughs> I recently wrote a tune entitled uh, That Tattoo Looked Better When You Weighed 90 Pounds and um, but my wife will not let me sing that she wrote, wrote a song back to me entitled I Wish You Could Hold Down a Job the Way You Hold Down a Lazy Boy and so uh, it was just not, not I didn't think it was kind I didn't think it was kind and and uh, I said, why don't we write one together that we can both sing to each other at a time when we're angry, when we're distressed with the other person. She said, a country song? I said, you better believe it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is that song. Oh, 
What did I do to tick you off? Get your undies in a wad. What did I do to light your fuse and set your timer off? What did I do to rub you wrong and make you pop your cork this time? When you got out of bed today, was it on the fighting side? I used to be your honey bun, now I hear you slamming doors. When I asked if I could kiss you goodnight, you pointed to the back of your drawers. You're telling me that nothing's wrong. Nothing, nothing at all. But I know that ain't true. You used to treat me like number one. All right, let's just move along. Uh, All right, I think we're gonna stop it for now. Okay, good, clap your hands and we'll stop the music. Okay, ready to unplug, ready, here we go. One, two, three. Good, beautiful, beautiful, all right. It was a nice try, but it's not a, not a musical crowd. Ah, so. <laughs> Thank you guys for allowing me to be here tonight. And uh, it's just, uh, we've had fun. Uh, can, I'd like to come back. I hope I can come back sometime. I hope that, would that be okay with you? And, and, uh, Man, it's, it's good. I used to drink Diet Coke all the time. And <laughs> Diet Coke has a chemical in it. It's, it's funny how your world goes full circle, but it's good to be back home. Good to be. Um, our church tried to steal your pastor a couple of years ago. Before you knew him, we, uh, we tried to hire him, and, uh, and he turned us down. And so... Uh, <laughs> See, I was on the elder board at the time, and I, I think it discouraged him a little bit. He said, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to deal with that. But, but we are so happy that he is here, and we're so proud of him. We're proud of you, and man, so God bless you guys. It's great to be back. Bruce, love you, man. So, so many good memories of, uh, of the days back there. I still can't play People Get Ready without thinking of new song, and then... <laughs> <laughs> and remember that you like them okay <laughs> no man what, what what a great I, I got to know Bruce Bruce was just you know Bruce Bruce was this musical force that was just helping keep these three kids singing together and uh, uh, but uh, man they, and so good to be here good to be here with you again and 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 let's see Chip, how how old were you when when I, I we went out fishing together one day? I remember we went out fishing, eight or nine years of age, and 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 he tells me that I encouraged him to play the piano, and and I don't know that I did, but we had a horrible piano player at Bradley, and I just wanted anybody in that spot, okay. Uh, <laughs> No, that's that's not true. We had a great piano player down there, but uh, good to see you, brother. Good good to see your mom. Good to see those of you who, some of you who vaguely remember me from 20 years ago, and I've I've put on a few pounds. You know, it's not my fault. My agent told me seriously 25 years ago. He said, Mike, if you'll gain five pounds a year, your face will not show the wrinkles on it. And I I saw him the other day, and I said, he said, you're huge. And I said, but my face isn't showing the wrinkles. And I said, it's your. You told me to gain five pounds a year, and he said, I had no idea you'd have any kind of length on your career. And. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, I was in a, speaking in a public school the other week, and the, the teacher came up to me and said, uh, beforehand, said, Mr. Williams, I, I watched your video, and I noticed that you referred to yourself as a fat guy. And I said, yes, ma'am. Uh, she said, you can't do that here. I said, oh, why? why? She said, fat is an offensive word. We don't use it at our school. And I said, oh. I said, what, what do you want me to call this? Um, 
And, and she said, I don't care, you just can't say fat. And I said, well, you're the teacher. I said, don't, don't leave it up to me because I'll come up with something you don't want either. And, and she said, okay. She said, let me think. She goes, okay, you're biscuitous. I said, well, bis yeah, that's, I said, what? She said, you're biscuitous. I said, what is biscuitous? She said, do you ever open up a tube of biscuits? And about halfway through, they go. <laughs> I was walking in the back doors of a church in Shreveport, Louisiana. And a good church. A little lady met me. She didn't know I was the speaker that day. She was one of the greeters. Had that day off from Walmart. <laughs> she said, you're visiting with us today, aren't you? I said, yes, ma'am, I am. She goes, you're going to have a good time today. We got a guest comedian going to be in here. I said, I love guest comedians. She said, you're the comedian, ain't you? I said, yes, ma'am, I am the comedian. She looked me up and down. She said, you are rather large. I said, yes, yes, ma'am. She said, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Lord? Don't you know your body is a temple? I said, yes, ma'am, and God's building a mega church right here is what he's doing. <laughs> I got to wrap it up tonight. You know, what, what, one of the hard things about this, I've been doing this literally 25 years, and, I, and I've got 25 years worth of stuff flopping around up here. And, and I really could go a long time tonight. And sometimes I go out on the Christian cruises, and they have me do, they'll have me do four nights in a row. And of an hour each night, and I, and I love doing that. But then I come here, and I and I know that I gotta wrap it up tonight, and and I gotta get back to. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Thank you for allowing me to share my life. Here's the deal: I'm a street kid from Chicago, Illinois. I didn't get lucky. I got blessed. Okay. Youngest of five kids. My oldest brother was killed in the streets of Chicago at 17. My next brother died in a jail cell in Louisiana. Met my biological father one time. I was 27. My mother gave me away to the mailman. She picked him out because, in her words, he was the only Christian man that she'd ever met. His name was Harry. Harry, would you take my youngest son and get him out of this hellhole that we live in? Give one of my kids a chance at life. And here he said, I can't. I take care of my wife who's very ill at home. But he said, I have a daughter and a son-in-law. They can't have children. You see, my daughter has multiple sclerosis. They have prayed for 12 years for a child. They'd love to have your boy. And the next thing you know, I get pulled out of that home and dropped into this home in Harvey, Illinois. These people who'd prayed for a kid for 12 years and got me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Be careful what you pray for, OK? Be specific, OK? I'm a rescued kid. That's a great home. They were good people, Baptist people. Mama, very sick. She used to sit by my bed at night, teach me Sunday school songs. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. You know what? I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun way beyond the blue. That's how we used to sing, kids, back then. Yeah, yeah, I know it's not hip, but that's how we sang. Here, for you guys. Do Lord, oh, do Lord. Okay, there. Just, just, just wanted to keep it real for the young people. Keeping it real. That was real right there. Notice how real it was when I started doing this. It's just, this is nothing says real like... That's real. I'm just going to pretend when I sing it the normal way. Thankful for a dad that uh, was a great Sunday school teacher. Oh, good guy. Studied the word you would have loved to have had him, Pastor. For me, it was a Sunday morning. 
way to church. Dad used to practice his lesson on mom and I in the car. And if we got to church before he was done, he would circle blocks around the church. We'd, he'd get the whole thing ready. And one day he turned to me in the back seat and he said, Mike, what about you? Are you ready? I knew what he was talking about. Are you ready to take Christ into your heart? I said, yes, sir. Pulled that car over. 1967 Chevy Impala, green metallic, painted by Earl Scheib, any car, $29.95. Those were the days. And that day I said yes to Jesus Christ. Now here's the deal, guys. I don't know you. Um, I didn't grow up in Bowling Green. I grew up in Chicago. I don't know what it's like to grow up out here in the country. I don't pretend to know your world. I don't pretend to know where you come from. But I do know this, the best thing that ever happened to me was Jesus Christ. And I believe with all my heart, if you'll give him a chance in your life, that 50 years from now, you'll be able to say the same thing. That's what I want to say tonight. Now I'm going to show you, um, good, we've had a good time, we've laughed, I got my stuff up here, I, got, I worked my way into an invitation back. I got, a, I, got, I got a great song I want to do for you on the piano, but I'm not going to do it tonight, but it's just something to save up for you. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a prayer song. It's called Let Me Win the Lottery. And, and, um, <laughs> um, this is a CD or a coaster, <laughs> if you're Amish. Uh, normally, my CDs are $400. <laughs> but tonight, because I care, $10. Okay. This is a little bit about my life called Thank You for Saving My Life. It's a story of my rescue and the rescue of about 20 other people around the country that I put together. Uh, it's back there. It's $10. Tonight. This is an important book. If you are a grandparent who has uh, grandkids, which kind of as a requirement for being a grandparent. <laughs> I just thought of that after I said that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a grandparent that has no grandkids. It's so weird. That's my name, Senator Grandparent. Yeah. Your teens, your teens have to read this book. It's called Love is Not a Three-Letter Word. Our kids are being lied to. They're being told that love and sex is the same thing. We know it's not. And we're going to be outshouted by the world if we don't get bold. Well, I'm embarrassed to talk with them about it. Uh, I, I'd rather be embarrassed to not talk about it. And grandparents, let me be honest with you. Statistics say that our, kids, our grandkids are more likely to listen to you than they are their own parents. You won't be embarrassed to take them through this book. It's not about sex. It's about what real love really is. Okay, how am I going to get them to read it, Mike? Real, very simple. You say, when you sit down and read it with Grandma, when you sit down and read it with Grandpa, I will put you back in the will. <laughs> it's $10. Humorous uh, way to help your marriage or to help the marriage of somebody you'd like to help marriage of. It's called Men Move to Mars When Women Started Killing the Ones on Venus. <laughs> it's, it, it truly is a two-part book. It's 160 pages for women, 12 pages for men. <laughs> Stay, stay with me just a second. Same exact material. <laughs> the women's side has all the details. What we were wearing, how much we paid for it, what kind of sale it was on, where we bought it, and most importantly, how we felt during the whole experience. Guys version just the facts okay guys you can probably start it at the same time 1260 probably finish about the same time tonight ten dollars at family christian stores it's uh 16.99 and uh three years for breaking and entering because they're closed 
this is the book. Um, it's all about how my wife and I ended up on the mission field and the story of about 30 other people that inspired us along the way who chose to say yes to God to a simple prayer and God has used them to change the world. It's called Shut Up, Get in the Jeep and Let Me Drive. Um, it's the it's the best book I've ever written, okay? Uh, it's $10. And last but not, well, maybe, maybe that was, oh, here, here we go. I thought, um, this was a humorous daily devotional uh, called Life Happens, Shut Up, Smile, and Carry a Plunger. All right? <laughs> Give you a little idea. Here we go. My life used to be nothing but smoking, drinking, fighting, and foul language until I decided to quit church softball. <laughs> Now they are, they are $10 a piece. I have a special. Uh, you get 10 for $100. <laughs> They're $10 a piece, uh, but you get any five for $40. That's our special. And if you get five, I will give you one of these right here. And, uh, and you say, how can you afford to do that? Uh, well, I'll be honest with you. I found a bag of these in the cabinet in the back. I hope you don't mind, Pastor. Um, um, and before the program, I made them into a special thing, kind of a little, little uh, you know, uh, hobby, little, little, uh, little thing, you know. And what I did, I turned these. These are actually universal, hands-free cell phone adapters, and it turns any cell phone into a hands-free device so you can it works on either side of your head uh what do they call that uh am, yeah amphibious exactly bruce amphibious either side of your head uh anyway uh, so and, and i mean this from the bottom of my heart uh, whether you enjoyed me tonight or not uh, buy something there's no sense in both of us going home disappointed um, <laughs> Pastor, come on up. Sing it with me. Amazing grace. How